because he hath borne it upon him, meaning the yoke that he's borne in his youth. And he likens that to the chastening of the Almighty and uh, this bearing of the yoke. And despite its being unpleasant, Jeremiah does see the importance of it. In Psalm 119.71, he says it is, well, the psalmist says, it is good that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. Going through affliction, going through difficulties, trials, bearing them the way that the Bible tells us to, builds a depth into us, and gives us strength, gives us courage, makes us overcomers of greater and greater trials. All of life is a series of trials. And... The more you overcome trials, the more you're prepared to face bigger trials as God broadens your sphere of influence and you get to make a bigger impact. You become a bigger soul and you leave a bigger mark behind you and you are achieving more and more what it was you were sent to this world to do. But if you don't overcome the trials that come into your life the way that the Bible says, if you try to duck out of them, take the easy way, kind of sidestep what they're meant to build in your life, then you remain a shallow soul, a small pebble, making small ripples as you pass through this world. And the very reason that Israel is now in this mess is because historically they had avoided the yoke that Jeremiah is saying he's bearing now. And he's bearing it quietly and in silence. He's contemplating its effects on him. But the nation had historically tried to get out of the yoke, take the easy way out. And that's why they were a shallow people. And that's why they're in this mess now. In Jeremiah 2.20, he points this out. God says, for of old time, I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands. And thou saidst, I will not transgress. When upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest playing the harlot. God had repeatedly laid the yoke upon them and they said, Oh, let us out of it, God. We'll behave now. And so he broke their bands. He freed them from the yoke. And what did they do? They ran right back to their idols. They did not bear patiently. And they were not willing to let uh, it have its perfect work. And because of that, they never allowed patience to have their perfect work. And now they're having to face perfect judgment, yokes of iron. Moses foretold this back in Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Listen to how he explained it. He says, if, you, if the nation rebels, here's what's going to happen. Thou, thou shalt serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he, your enemy, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. What's an ox's yoke ordinarily made out of? Wood. Yeah, yeah. If you put on your ox a yoke of iron, <laughs> do you think it would be lighter or heavier than wood? <laughs> Could you see your ox not being able to lift his head off the ground with a yoke of iron? It is an intolerable burden. It is a burden meant to destroy. And he says that God would put a yoke of iron upon their necks until he had destroyed thee. That is the point of a yoke of iron. It is a judgment. It is a punishment, a destruction from the Lord for sin. And Jeremiah applied that exact same thing to the heathen nations round about Israel, to Moab and Ammon and to Edom and Tyre and Sidon. In Jeremiah 28, 14, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. And of course, the point is a yoke of iron is an unbearable yoke. It's an unbearable burden. It's a judgment for sin. But you know, Jesus says in Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He's describing someone bearing a yoke of iron, the unbearable weight of the guilt and the bondage and the penalty of all their sins. But he says, if you come to me, I will, what's the next word? Anybody know? Give. I will give you rest. You don't have to earn it. 
It's a free gift, this rest of salvation to all those that are laboring under the burden of damnation. And he takes the burden that we cannot bear, and he bears it for us. And when he puts it on his own back, now we can see clearly what it looks like. And you know what we see him carrying on his back that he took off of ours? A cross. He's bearing our cross, our judgment for sin, our damnation, the unbearable burden that we could not have handled. He's taking it for us. It's the wrath of God against sinners being poured out upon his sons. 